All right, here we go. I think I finally got this microphone how I want it. All right, here we go. Yeah, sounds good. One, two. <clears throat> All right, Shalom, brothers and sisters out there. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. <clears throat> and Shalom to the hopefully elect. All right. So this lesson is uh, it's entitled israelite questions divorce murder multiple wives and punishment and those are some of the things i mean really there are other things that i didn't want to put in the title <clears throat> like the one dealing with murder is really dealing with a b o r t i o n yeah that's what it's dealing with because that is murder let's face it that is murder all right, murder of a baby. But I didn't want to put that in the title, so forgive me. <clears throat> anyway, how's the sound, everybody? Because I did some stuff with my mic. How's the sound, everybody? It's pretty, it's coming in pretty good now, I believe. How's the sound to y'all, though? All right, so let's get the first question, uh, the first scripture. <clears throat> Excuse me, too. Excuse me. All of a sudden, I'm just, you know, had to clear my throat. So this is uh, Romans 15 and 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. That's what these lessons are about. Edification. People ask questions. Sometimes, it, it, you know, it takes me a few weeks to get to them. Other times, somebody asks a question, I can answer it right away. All right. So it's all about edification. <clears throat> feeding the sheep somebody can a brother can put that up feed the sheep feed my lambs i think it's john i'm not sure where is it john 21 somewhere around there first corinthians 15 i'm sorry first corinthians 14 and 3 it says but he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort <clears throat> All right, y'all heard that one. All right, so this one, I'm going to skip this one. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 10. Therefore, I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord has given me to edification and not to destruction. All right, so again, you see that word edification. It's all about edification. If you look it up, we know the word means to build up, but just, let's just show. With all the new Israelites that's coming into the truth, waking up, you know, and all of that, they have to learn how to study. Everything can't just be asking questions, but then, you know, they ask a few questions and then they get told you need to study. Study is not just randomly watching videos through all the different Israelite groups. Studying is going into it, breaking down words. Taking notes is a big part of studying. Taking notes says right here edification the act of building building up metaphor edifying edification see that the act of one who promotes another's growth growth excuse me it says in christian is not christian in israelite wisdom or just wisdom you can leave this word out the act of one who promotes another's growth in wisdom piety happiness holiness see it? a building i.e the thing built edifice so we do this to help build up brothers and sisters so that you'll learn, right? Jake loves to use the word class. I had a class, a class. When you go to class to learn, <clears throat> I don't normally refer to, you know, my videos as classes, but some people say that, you know what I mean? Anyway, let's go to the first uh, question. And this one, like I said, sometimes I can get to these right away. Other times it'll be a few weeks or a few days before I get around to it. 
this one a brother asked uh this is from your lot of moth and the brother was putting up scriptures and then i didn't really didn't, under, didn't understand where he was going i'll read this one <clears throat> matthew 23 13 but warned to use scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourselves neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in Warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And then really just when you put it at today's terms, you got these leaders that go off, and the people that follow them, they go off the same way. If I take, give, I give you ISUPK, I'm sorry, IUIC, for example. Really, with all the groups, they're going to do after what their leaders do. With IUIC, you see them avoid the name of the Lord. Bishop Nate does it. That's what his followers do. They avoid the name of the Lord. They make excuses. They do gray area, right? They're very sneaky, slithery, subtle. They try to get around shit other than explain it. They, they do that because of Bishop Nate. ISUPK, they have the same type of carnal, low vibrational base, you know, very brute like behavior. That's how their leaders behave. Look at that, that, that one dude. John the Baptist was a plate of fried fish. Pass me the hot sauce, right? John the Baptist is a, what do he say? He was a canine, walk him every day or some shit like that. So you see their men in that same dumbed down, low vibrational behavior. With GMS, 100% true. You see brothers going into lessons, breaking things down, answering questions, going on the highways and hedges, right? The Yah Israelites, they avoid camps like the plague. They won't go out and teach. They got long hair. They have a very feminine vibration, very emotional, just like their leaders, which they don't really even have any leaders. They're just a bunch of mixed nuts in a barrel. So I read that first scripture before the brother asked the question. He said, Shalom, bro, I have a different kind of question for you. I ask for any correction or reproof you can provide for myself. I know all of all of the men are busy, but if the spirit allows, would you consider this favor? So then he didn't even ask the question. So I was like, well, what, what is the question? I said, what's the question? <clears throat> so he says, I know there is order. So when when is it time to speak when entering into this? I have only two videos, none of them on the highways. I don't want to make this look bad in any way, but I do not want to. I do want to get out there. Ultimately, am I on the right track thus far? I pray that my answers come to me because the questions I have when I put into into words sound a mess when I read them back to myself. So basically, his question is, <clears throat> and this up here, these, these scriptures really have nothing to do with you. In the beginning, you were young brother in the truth. Let me just leave out of that. In the beginning, you're a young brother in the truth learning. Right now, all you should be doing is learning. Taking notes, getting yourself prepared. In your mind, if your mind says, you know, if you know you want to get out and teach the word, that's great. That's great. The desire to teach the word is important, but you're not going to do anything that the Lord don't want you to do. And it's different for every man. We can't tell you when that is. You know, there's no, uh, what's the word? There's no measuring thing or, you know, amount of you got to be in the truth. 20 days and you get in 20 days and after that you take the, you know no you it's every man gonna be different the best thing you can do is is study up prepare right watch videos like i said watching videos is not aimlessly or when you study it's not aimlessly clicking on every different israelite video no you got to get into the things and, and feed your spirit you got to get built up you know you got to learn and the best way to do that man you got to probably watch and i was riding early i was riding taking a little ride and i said to myself Probably for the average brother. See, we had a lot more time than you got now when we started learning the truth. Back in 2009, when I started learning the truth, 2007, when I started learning the truth, it's a lot different than it is now. It was it was a lot different than it is now. You know, we didn't know back then that we would have all this time to learn. We don't know how much time you got now, but you got to study and apply yourself. And if you're going to be a teacher, you got the damn Man, your truth got to be your whole focus all the time. You don't have time to be bullshitting around, you know. But when I first came into the truth, I probably didn't watch football. I didn't play video games. I didn't do hardly none of that for a time, for a, go, for a long while. You got to go through that whole change. The Lord going to deal with you. But 
some brothers they learn and they go out there right away other brothers you know it takes some time myself i didn't go out there and teach i learned, started learning the truth in 2007 but i never went on the highways and hedges to 2009 you know i ain't telling a dude to take because you right now you don't have two years to wait you know and it wasn't exactly two years it was just a year and some months but I don't know. You got to pray on it. The best thing I would give any any brother, best advice for new brothers, you got to pray on it and wait for the Lord to pray. Because he's going to put the spirit on you. If he, can we get that Jeremiah 20? Fire shot up in my bones or shut up in my bones. I hate to say shut up in my bones. I mean, shut up like the Christians say. <clears throat> so this is Ashra Kayasharala, John 21, 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him, the third time lovest thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh saith unto him, feed my sheep. That's our job, feed the sheep. But every man got a learning curve. You got a amount of time. You got to study. And real teacher, somebody who's really into the word, you're going to study the word. You ain't going to be bullshitting around watching videos for entertainment. While the truth is entertaining, it's compelling stuff. It's better than anything you watch on TV or anywhere else. It's not strictly for entertainment. It is entertaining. You will, you know, it's the best thing you can watch, but you gotta you gotta approach it with a with a different mindset. This is life and death right here. This is GMS of Matthew Eyes from Howard, Ecclesiastes 33, 17. Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. Right. It's a different when you go through the different Israelite groups, it's a different vibration with every one. GMS is a more serious, cerebral solemn you know we and while we do joke and we you know we laugh at stuff the situation over here is that we it's, it's deadly serious we ain't got time we're not trying to you know we're not trying to big ourselves up we doing the work of the lord same brother uh ecclesiastes 24 34 behold that i have not labored for myself only oh i read that one so like yeah no no i didn't Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom is, is similar, but it's a different scripture, right? Excuse me. I want to just jump to this one. Uh, <clears throat> I thought I had it. Okay, see, see this brother, every brother got a, a different testimony they'll tell you about. The brother said, I was slacking. The Lord took stumbling blocks from me to get me on track. You know, when that happens, stumbling blocks come different ways. I wasn't necessarily, you know, um, slacking. It was just that I was, I had never heard anything as compelling, you know, as powerful as the truth. I grew up in, you know, as a Baptist, a Christian, and Sunday school, you know, kids, Sunday school teaching, all of that. And I just was like, I just wanted to be sure, you know, uh, as sure as I could be. Just study. You know, I was transitioning out of that hip hop world. You know what I mean? I was basically in the studio working on music and then had never been on the internet and went on the internet and saw you know the uh, different men teaching the truth and then i came across the apostles and that was it i was like i was hooked and then it just made a big what's the word uh a big <laughs> i can only have the word it just made a, a a change of mind was taking place i was it was changing me so i had to transition out of that that hip-hop world you know what I mean? Thinking I'm going to, you know, make this because I went from just being a regular rapper to, yeah, now I'm going to make Israelite raps. And then, <laughs> then you come to that realization that the whole music game is fixed and you can't make it without selling out. And then you also learning that the Lord don't need rap and all of that. That's why we tell you now. We I know the Lord ain't dealing no fucking hip hop. He's going to do things the same way he's always done it through his word. Anyway, this is Ashra Ka. Jeremiah 29, then, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay, meaning I couldn't help but bring it out. See, when the Lord put the Spirit on you, you're going to teach, and that's all it is to it. Ain't no way around it. So the guys that don't teach, that make excuses, we know when we ask you what, where your work's at, why you ain't doing the work, we already know why you're not doing the work. Because you don't have the spirit. Jay could tell you he got the Holy Spirit. He on fire. He man, the Lord. That nigga got no videos, no interest in teaching. He ain't even studying that much. Jake just think you got the spirit because in your mind, you think you do. You don't. 
If the Lord didn't put the spirit on you, you ain't out there in the world in the in the world teaching the word. The Lord ain't and he ain't dealing with you on that level. He may be dealing with you on the level of knowing you an Israelite and helping you follow the commandments and this that, but you're part of the congregation. You ain't one of the prophets. Jim S. Spiritual Ark, Ecclesiastes 39 and 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient to be occupied in prophecies. And that's the most, one of the most dangerous things you can do when you're in the truth is be idle, not doing anything. Because that, that'll lead you down the wrong road. Verse 2, he will keep the sayings of the renowned men and what subtle parables are, he will be there also. And one of the biggest disservices you can do to yourself is all that, all them different groups. You're going, man, them different books and them different groups and them different types of Bibles, all that shit will lead you astray. JB so trying to be too deep. The truth is not for that. You got to come up and get on the level, but it ain't for all that esoteric shit you diving off into all that Book of Mormon Book of Enoch, Book of Jasher, Book of Jubilees. You right here in the, in the Septuagint, you about to fuck up. Ecclesiastes 39 and 3, he will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversing in dark parables. And that overrighteous shit get a lot of jakes too. So, you know, just to answer that brother's question, it's going to be different for every man. <clears throat> I don't have a, you know, Hebrew is like cliff notes to tell you, you know, if you do this and do three cups of that and a pint of this, and you come out on the other side, a polished teacher, nope. You just, the Lord going to deal with you. And see, when you come into the truth, the most high going to do stuff, he's going to take you through things and teach you stuff through experience. And some of them experiences hurt. And all that can be used to teach you, you know, how the Lord deal. You got to learn the ways of the Lord. But how you going to find out? You got to read his book. Jim S. Amathe, eyes from Yahweh to Jeremiah 1 and 4. Then the, word, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, listen. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before you ever came out, the Lord knew. He already knows who his prophets are. You don't learn in the seminary school. I can't tell you how to be a prophet. The apostles ain't going to tell you that. We're not here for that. We're here to gather the ones that the Most High sent to do his work, but we don't know who you are. You know, we see, brothers, we can tell by the works that you do, but in the beginning, we can't say, that, yeah, this brother right here, you know, you came out, you looked. On the bottom of your heel, you had on, uh, you know how Buzz Bunny had that fricassee rabbit on his heel. <laughs> you can't look on your heel and see these little, you know, little emblems or little, some tattoo or anything that's telling us that you were sent by your Howabash and how shall we don't know that. Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. If you're meant to do it, you're going to do it. Verse 8, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord, Yahweh, said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So it's, it's, a, it's a calling on your life. It's a calling on your life. You don't want to sound like the Christians and shit, you know. But the thing is this, <clears throat> just like all the other groups, they you see people that like those groups, they, they're they drawn to what whatever type they are. The carnal, brutish niggas, they're going to follow ISUPK. I, you know, the proud people who need an image and they need, they need you know, structure to be able to see it so they think the Lord is dealing with they need they they're going to go to ISUPK. I mean, uh, to IUIC. Those that value... You know, they need the flash. They need the gimmicks. They need to see all that and they need to know it's just thriving like a business like America. They're going to gravitate to IUIC. That's, you know, more Christian polished. You know what I mean? Those are just value the truth of the word, the gritty in the in the trenches. You know, without all the pretension, you're going to gravitate towards GMS, the truth. GMS through the fire, brother Tazamak from uh, GMS Memphis. Proverbs 38, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. And those that seek that uh, a lot of women, when they come in, the reason why those other groups, particularly the Yah Israelites, attract so many women, because they give you that feel of the world, a place you can go and be noticed and recognized and seen. See, in GMS, you ain't going to see no women. The women are quiet in the background, following and listening, studying and observing. 
the other groups you ain't gonna never see women and say oh that yeah they gms look at all the pretty women you ain't gonna see that because we don't do that the other groups some of them do it but the Yah israelites have a very relaxed you know it's just very relaxed you know that that little sniveling weak it's, it's very weak and they even got a dating a dating app called Yah's singles if you don't believe me look it up Yah's singles <laughs> He's got a date now. Tells you what mind state they're, mindset they're in. So let's move on. I see a lot of great scriptures, but let's move on. I'm gonna, I want to hit some more of these questions. So back to that brother. It's different for every man. <clears throat> I can't tell you when is the right time for you. You know what I mean? Why you gonna hear brothers? You know, say why you ain't got no videos, and you know, not to you, but just to particular people. Every man in his own time, right? So this is from David is real. This is a new person. Now, when I was filtering out my comments, I saw his response. And he said he don't watch IUIC. He just knew. He's just a new person. So, you know, no disrespect to you, David Israel. I just didn't, you know, this is a question that you, sounds like, you know, somebody from IUIC would ask. And that same name, IUIC, generally they'll say, my name is Fred Israel, you know, Felicia Israel, whatever. He says, I have a serious question. After you divorce your wife, if she an Israelite, could you get a new one? And the thing is this. I said, well, I answered back. I said, yes. What are you waiting for? Ha ha. And I said, stop watching IUIC. Because that's like, they tell me, and you know, they, they bind you with a lot of burdens over there. And they, and they, sh they um, sugarcoat shit for women's sake. All right. But this is the thing. You as an Israelite man, you can have as many women permit as you, as you can have. Right. Even if you got a wife already, you it's let me say it like this. It's uh in the law that Israelite men had had more than one wife. And this time now we don't we don't tell Jake to do that because your focus should be on teaching and preparing yourself to teach or just following along, taking notes and looking for the coming of the Lord. This is what you should be pre prepared for. Jake don't have time for all them women. Can we get those? Let me let me, let me look up a scripture. I got brothers doing let me. <clears throat> let's get this so just to answer the question the answer is yes even if she was is israelite or even if she's not the women are the one that are bound under the under the uh what's the thing called uh the law of the husband right the husband is not bound under the law of the wife let's see uh i don't even know what scripture i wanted now damn it <clears throat> just hold on here uh yeah, I, I lost it. Oh, I know what it is. So like it. <clears throat> to put it in short, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Just because it's permissible in the law. Or you can go and find it where our forefathers did it. Doesn't mean that you should do it in this time now. And I see the brother got one of them. Uh, GMS Spiritual Art. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Right? Expedient is another word. Or another word for expedient is profitable. All things are not profitable in the time you're in now. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And I have also here, 1 Corinthians 10, 23, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Right? And you can find, um, yeah, and, and you you already, you ain't with the woman. A lot of Jays come into the truth and you still got that Christian mentality. They tell you as a Christian, if you sleep with a woman and you're not married, you committed fornication. So then you got to walk around with damn blue balls, not wanting to get a woman afraid to you know indulge and be with a damn woman because you think you got to marry then you're gonna court her and do all this you're gonna be with the woman then the first time you be with her you go oh then you can be like, oh shit <laughs> this nigga two minute brother i can't be with you i'm just being funny but don't be so afraid when you come into the truth as israelites as men you have to realize you got to take your manhood back israelite men had women okay don't be so fucking scared man I mean, you want to give with a woman, give her one. All that shit. Because Jake didn't ask me over the years, is this fornication, brother? You know, well, I got to marry. 
You're doing all this shit, get bouquets of flowers and trying to go on a date and walk a whole hand. Doing fuck all that, man. You like the woman, get with her. Tell her you want to get with her. Because these women nowadays ain't gonna wait anyway. They have your ass waiting. You know, you dating her and you trying to court her and be all extra nice, and she dating, she another dude is getting it. Don't don't fuck around, man. You want to be with a woman? Don't see the truth give you back your manhood. These religions of the world have you so fucking scared to be a man that you wind up just being a pussy. That shit is a I despise that shit. Be a man. You want to get with a woman? Get with her. If you don't, then okay. You can just, you know, you can just jack off or whatever you're gonna do. Cause that's what that's what you're gonna be at. No, nah, bro, I got my temple in control. I don't even get on it. Yeah, okay. You lying. Jim S through the fire. Deuteronomy 2115. If a man have two wives, you heard that, Christians? That's the old testament, brother. I'm not your brother, first off, sissy. Secondly, it's in the Lord's book. And these laws, these same ones we read now, are gonna be in our inward parts in the kingdom. So don't, don't, don't act like that. The Lord ain't gonna change around the whole Israelite culture because we're going into a new world. He gave us this book and it's gonna be this way forever. Can we get it, brothers? The law that endure forever. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 21, 15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne them children, both the beloved and the hated, if the firstborn be hers that was was hated, see, it's just giving you an example of a man if a man in the law, a provision if a man have more than one wife, then it shall be when the when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. Yeah, brother, see that dude with the firstborn. We know that nigga, but the the example is there. If a man have two wives, why would it be there if he wasn't permitted to have more than one woman? That's the question. That's what we're looking at, you know? Yeah, you got weirdos, man. We ain't even going to give them no shine. Stupid. Ashraqah, Yasharala, Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High. What a commandments, brother? It's law. That's what it is, it's law. And the law that endures forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. That's it. GMS Spiritual Art 144, Romans 331. Do we then make void the law through faith? Yeah, how forbid? Yeah, we establish the law. So the law is never going to be done away with. No matter how much you people hate it, it's never going to pass away. Here it is now. GMS Through the Fire, Matthew 518. For verily, I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle. Shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. See right there, if they all be fulfilled, the reason gonna be it's gonna pass away. You can't see the forest for the trees. Can't see it. Jim S. Spiritual Art, Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. 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 Converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is sure, making wise is simple. Brother, when y'all see the word Lord, why do you say Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai? The most high name is Yahweh. Yeah, we know that. But what did Yahweh Shah say? No man coming to the Father but by me. So if you're gonna, we know the name of the Lord is Yahweh. But how you gonna get to him? By Hashem in the name of Yahweh Shah. Don't make it hard. It's easy. Jim Escobar Dama, First Kings eleven and three, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. That's nasty, brother. Well, you know what? Maybe you a Hamite. Even Hamites have concubines and multiple wives, and his wives turned away his heart. All right, so King Solomon, the wisest man that ever existed in any civilization, who was Yahweh Shai, later on, he, he became Yahweh Shai later on, same spirit. He had many women, okay? He had many women. Let's get back to the question. So to that individual, and it was a short, short response and a short question. I don't know why he asked that if she's an Israelite, even if she's not. Yeah, you can get a new wife. Okay. I can guarantee that woman got a new man. I tell you that. I have a serious question. After you divorce your wife, if she an Israelite, could you get a new one? Yes. What are you waiting for? You got a man, you got it. You got a new lease on life. What are you waiting on? Here's one. This one is kind of deep. <clears throat> this one was from the video about Sukiana. Well, it really wasn't about her. It was entitled. What if she repents? Hold on here. Let me give you the full screen. Yeah, and, and, and Jay loved to take these scriptures that we know 
in the future they try to they try to make it like something wrong with it or it's dirty. They try to change it up. Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. This is coming in the future, near future. Saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Coming to the time where men will go back to having many women. Yep, even in the kingdom. <clears throat> so from the video, what if she repents, right? Mordecai 144. He says, <clears throat> I've had a question for a long time concerning people like her. If she got an abortion, will she still have to answer for the death of her child? Or will she not have to suffer the consequences of killing her child if she repents? What's the purpose of repentance? The purpose of repentance is turning back to the Lord and that you might be saved and not destroyed for your sins, right? So if, you know, and we know that people have partaken in abortions, had abortions, done other stuff, a bunch of abominable works. But the Lord is, for those that are forgiven, they're going to be saved, right? Or if they don't want to be saved on this side, you'll be forgiven. That's just what, that's the, that's the point of repentance. So just because a woman had an abortion like Sukiyana did, she publicized it or whatever, or would she not have to suffer the consequences for killing her child if she repents? Well, we can't really tell you that. You can repent, but that doesn't remove the fact that you might get punished, right? The forgiveness doesn't out doesn't say you won't be punished because the Lord has a way of, of putting hell on you in your life, right? Purge out, purging out your iniquity. I mean, I hope I'm saying that right. It's just the thing you saying you repent and coming into the truth is no way going to make life easy for you. You're going to go through more hell when you come into the truth. The people out there in the world, they may not get. Let me get this scripture. Uh, hold on here. See, people in the world, they do things and they seemingly don't get punished for it, right? And they just go on living their life, you know, living it up, having abortions, doing shit, murders, doing all of this. But eventually they meet a terrible fate. Those that repent, you may not be living a great life. The Lord, Lord might be putting hell on you. But in the end, Lord willing, you be delivered and saved in the chariot. People that's going on in their sin and iniquity, that they ain't gonna make it. No matter how they're living now, they're not gonna make it. Those of us, we we suffering now, but we still we have hope. Let me say it like we're prisoners of hope. Let me get another scripture why it's in my mind. Let's see. Second is just <clears throat> and we can't tell you when things when bad things happen to us. Sometimes we often think that it's for shit that we did in the past, and it could be. The forgiveness of the Lord doesn't mean you ain't gonna, he ain't going to punish your ass. It just means maybe you'll be saved in the chariots. It's just shit that we've done. The Lord put hell on us, and we go through them for shit, for the decisions we've made or things that we've done. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Let me open it up. Verse 12, though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feared not before the Most High. Now I got two examples. I can't show them to you, but I can tell you about them. One of these, Let's see. <clears throat> Sometimes the Lord get people right right away for the shit they do. And other times their judgment come on them later. There was this woman that was cheating on her husband, right? This is uh it says Tamika Hargrave died while cheating on her husband with her with her car mechanic. Tamika and the mechanic were having sex in a closed garage while the car was running. When they both passed out from the fumes and died, they were later found by her husband. So she was doing wickedness. And that shit came back on her, like, you know, and then she died, right? 
then you have other people that do dirt and then there was another lady i shared the video uh one of the brothers from the bahamas i believe shared it with me yeah yeah brother bashar from the bahamas sent me a video with this lady driving she ran into this ups truck hit it from the back with a red bmw the whole car broke open it was all messed up and she was out laid out on the ground with her damn eyeball out on the pavement obviously that's somebody that the lord <laughs> took vengeance on i ain't laughing at her but that was somebody that that her sins caught up to her and, and she died a terrible death see so that's the type of shit right there that when you see it you're like damn that make you feel the lord and, and watch the way you move mm. Good Lord. Okay. YouTube age restricted the video. Let's see which one. Now, these devils age restricted fight the good fight of faith, not each other. With ISUBK and, and uh IUIC fighting. Why? Because they fighting. You got videos of, of fights on YouTube. That's stupid. It doesn't matter. Let's keep it moving. Yep. I want to read a few of these. This is Jim S. Spiritual Art, Romans 9, 16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that show of mercy. Right. And he says, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy and to whom I will compassion. Now, if a person turn back from, turn back from their sins, the Lord is going, I hate to sound like Christians again, but he's going to do a work in your life. <laughs> but we can't tell you, you're going to still get, you're going to still catch hell regardless. And that would the person wasn't asking, are they not going to catch hell? They were just asking. I mean, see, Jake come up with these questions to ask, and it's like, you ain't even a woman. What are you so worried about a woman having an abortion for? You a dude. This is the type of shit Jake just be sitting around, you know, eating edibles or whatever the hell they doing, thinking up shit to ask. He said he's been thinking of that for a long time. Boy. So real quick, <clears throat> this is Second Edges chapter 7. I'm going to go to verse six. It says, there is also another thing. A city is built and is set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. This city is the kingdom of heaven. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And the one only path and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. And this represents the tribulations on both sides of you. Fire on one side, water on the other. The path is narrow. You in the truth, you in that, you walk in that narrow path, right? Trying to get to the kingdom, but you got shit on the right and the left trying to tear you down. If this city now were given into a man for an inheritance, if he shall never pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? If you don't go through hell, how are you going to enjoy the heaven, right? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. So we got to fight like hell to try to get to the kingdom. This is Jim S. Amathia, eyes from Yehuda, Micah 7 and 9. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Right. Just because you say, you know, Lord, please forgive me. I'm sorry for what I did. You're going to do things going forward that require punishment too. And they execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light. And I will behold his righteousness. There you go. Mm. So I want to kind of move on. Um, great scriptures, though, brothers. All you brothers out there, great scriptures. Um, <laughs> this brother said, my supervisor fired me Friday and the dead died Saturday. It was so you, what are you saying? It was a sin to fire you? Maybe you deserve to be fired. Have you looked at that? That, that, that you know. He he had already ran up a tab against the Lord, obviously. I mean, you should you gotta go back to the dad. The dad probably, you know, it was just his time. So right here again, let's read it again. I've had a question for a long time concerning people like her. If she got an abortion, would she still have to answer for the death of her child? Um, it's likely no, but it could come up. And when she passed away, she go before the throne of the Lord, will it come up? We don't know. We're not up there. We can't say for sure. I wouldn't think, you know, every wicked thing you've done is not suddenly just tossed away. I mean, the Lord says, I would throw your sins in the sea of forgiveness, sure. But we don't know if it's not going to be addressed in other ways. It says, or will she not have to suffer the consequences for killing her child if she repents? 
consequences like what there's already no hell can we get that that scripture uh the wages of sin romans 6 23 brothers and then he says and a follow-up question would be what would the most high do for the child himself now how how can we know that you know how can we know that i see on the comment board now mordecai how can we know what the lord gonna do for the child we ain't in the spiritual world how we know we don't know if there's a place for aborted children there in the spiritual realm and then they get to ride on deers and antelope and get to run through the garden and we don't know that we have such things like that we can't really answer you right obviously that that soul that was in that aborted child was not you know it's not a new soul it's been on the earth time and time again you know what i mean that's all just, i mean we can't really tell you stuff like that he says the reason i asked the question that question is not because of worrying about the woman but for the father that lost their child and is grieving over the wicked woman who killed well why didn't you ask about the dad then you should ask about the pop you asked about the woman you jake you gotta be more straightforward what you want to know you want to know is, is that bitch gonna suffer from killing my baby maybe maybe not it just depends we can't say for sure we don't know how the lord determines that we pray that when we ask for forgiveness of our sins all the nasty dirty wicked shit we did that the lord won't exact severe punishment on us but he's going to chastise you in other ways he may not give you the full wrath of what you deserve right for example in this case murder right the scriptures say if you shed the blood of a man then your blood should be shed but if you repent now maybe the most High won't allow you to be killed in a violent way but on the way you could get, you know, some other stuff could happen to you, like lighter punishment. The Lord is, you know, he's balanced. You asking us to be in the mind of the Lord and tell you what he's going to do for every, we can't tell you that. We don't know what the Lord going to do. We pray that he be light without judgment and punishment, but we be catching hell now. Your feet be hurting. You get a toothache out all of a sudden out of the blue. You wind up locked up for a traffic ticket. So you wonder, what did I do, Lord? You don't know. We don't know what he's, what he's doing it for, but we going through something, right? Always we under the curses for goodness sake right jim has spiritual art romans 6 23 if you think somebody's losing their job is judgment you know come on man get with it i mean shit happens to people every time something happens to somebody it ain't necessarily like a, a harsh judgment it's a punishment and things can we get the scriptures on brothers being chastised people be, get chastised all the time now obviously somebody get thrown out of their car and their eyeball hanging out and they laid dead on the ground obviously that's judgment but some cracker that fired you from your job, his dad dying, it wasn't judgment because he fired you, therefore the most high killed his daddy. What was the point? But you making Bibles? Is that your job? See, this is the type of shit right here that you just, Jake, we don't get it. I don't really get it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Let's move on. I ain't gonna make it a big that big a deal. Jim has spiritual art, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Everybody hear that? We all understand that, right? Even when we pass away, see the Lord, we may be in the kingdom, but you had a brother there, that beautiful brother that just passed away. Daniel the Levite, he just passed away. And that brother was doing the work, you see? And he still perished. Will he be in the kingdom? Yes, we believe he, you know, Lord willing, he'll be one of the elect and they'll come back in the chariots when the Lord comes, right? But what happened? The wages of sin is death. I can't say, what the, I ain't saying the brother did nothing wrong, but we're in this sinful flesh. And that sin is what is what you know eventually nails us, whether you're forgiven for it or not. It has an effect on us. That's what we're trying to get the, the cure from. We're trying to get eternal life through Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai already defeated death, and He procured a place of salvation for us. But we got to pass to that point. You see, we got to get to that point. He already crossed over. He's perfect, but now we have to do it. And this is what the new covenant is going to do for us. Bring us where He is. In that regard, you can't, some guys, you can't tell that, but they just using that new covenant argument because it's vague and they can, you, they can ride on it to make themselves seem like they're separate. But all that is, they just bugged out. Cause they'll say, niggas would take the, that brother dying and say, see, if you was on a new covenant, that wouldn't happen. Yeah. The new covenant said that we all going to be under it together. It ain't the new covenant. Ain't you on it. Five people on it under the new covenant. Cause they believe it. But the other, the other is like, so not they, the scripture don't read that way. It said, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So when the new covenant is enacted, none of us will die. That proves that we're not under it. This is this stupid. GMS spiritual art, Romans 6, 23 again. And GMS in his likeness. 
for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Most High is eternal life. What? The gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, our Lord. So when he comes, then we become as he is. That's that's what happens. See? So then, you know, then, but going back to this question, I can't really give you the, I know, you know, you're seeking answers for it, but let's read it all again. I've had a question for a long time concerning people like her. If she got an abortion, would she still have to answer for the death of her child? Or will she not have to suffer the consequences for killing her child if she repents? It really is like the same thing. I don't think the Lord is going to do the ultimate punishment to her as he would have done for an unrepentant sinner. Of course not. But along the way, he's probably going to chastise and, and do things. And it's going to be also based upon the walk in which that individual carries from then on. A person that, that's uh, not, a, uh, not in the faith, they got a bunch of sins over them. And eventually they're going to be nailed for them sins. And a follow-up question would be, what would the Most High do for the child themselves? I'm sure the child is at peace. The spirit is at peace, but that little flesh has passed away, man. You, that Whoever the father of that child is, they'll get them back in the kingdom. Just like we all say with our loved ones and our relatives and, you know, you know, a lot of deep thinking over there about stuff that can't save you. Anyway, let's move on. Before I read that, because this is another one of those, you know, one of those questions. Let's see what brothers got on the comment board. Uh, Yep, Jim S. in his likeness, Romans 2, 11. But there is no respect of persons with the most high. Now, somebody out there is going to be like, well, you didn't really answer the question. How can I give you an answer to that? How do I know that? I don't know the most high scoreboard. He got, okay, you committed five sins. I'm going to take two, carry the one, then I'm going to punish you ten times for this. We don't know that. We can't say. We're not the most high himself. Once you repent, that means you got a newness of the way you see things. And supposedly, Right. If you make it to the end, then all those things you have done, your house is going to cover for those things. But that does not mean in this life you ain't going to still receive some punishment from the Lord. That's that's the, the real answer. If you if you make it and you're saved, that obviously means that all the shit you did was overlooked so that the most High won't destroy you. And you're one of his elect. Right. But before you became before the like now, from now on up into that, we can't tell you that when Jacob's trouble comes. You might not catch a bullet in the shoulder, in the leg, or you might not, you know, go without food. We can't tell you that. You're going to get punishments along the way. Hold on, brothers. There are going to be things that happen to you, and you, you could wind up losing your job. You could wind up being homeless for a period of time. Different things happen. And it could be for any of those things you've done or it just may be isolated. Yep. Azana Ma says, 2 Timothy 4 and 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's their brother, you know, Daniela. Which in his regard, you know, some of us, when you deal with the Lord's movie, as we call it, which is this life, right? You got certain people that play certain roles. Certain individuals, your role is only going to go up to a certain point, then you're going to check out. You're going to be off the show, right? After that, you you be resting with the Lord. We in our limited understanding, we say, you know, obviously that was just that brother's lot. He was, you know, put here to live this many years, and then that was going to be the end, right? Just like our oh, our elders, elders, certain those men, they were they were going to be put here to do the work for a period of time. Then they're going to get in their old age. Then it's going to pass away. The ones that are delivered, it was decided beforehand that they was going to be the ones that final generation that was going to come forth, and these are the men that's never going to die. Those of us that are saved and never die, that's your lot. That's your role in the movie. You're never going to die, right? The little baby that's born, you know, now that never dies and they go on into the kingdom, that was their role. Their role was to be born in this world, go to the new world, get a new body. And then when they grow up, they're going to say, my parents told me about the destruction. I, re I, I remember I was only, I was really small, but I remember us going into the chair, so I was running for our life. But I can't tell you everything. And then you got you might have children that are alive now that are eight years old. Right? Some of the sons and daughters of the prophets and the men of the Lord, they may see all of it. And then go into the next world and grow up as as adults and be like, Yeah, I remember that was 10 years old. Man, we were so scared, man. We were seeing people getting destroyed. 
Then the angels came and saved us. And then they made us a, a, a hut in the wilderness, and we just stayed there, man. And nothing ever happened to us. We had food. Then one day the spaceships came. Then I saw you. How shall I come? They're going to be able to tell all of that in the kingdom. That's their role. Then you have some that as soon as Jacob's trouble start, they're going to die. They're going to get tortured. They're going to get punished. Some of them are going to go into guillotine. Some of us, you know, whatever, get locked in the prison. We all going to have a story to tell, but we don't know what that story is going to be. And we don't know what our portion is. We won't find out till we get to it. Same as with that. We can't tell you what, you know, you have some that are never going to die. You have others that are going to die during Jacob's trouble. You got some that's going to die. We're going to get almost to the end and they may die. Then be right, you know, raised right back up. GMS spiritual art. First Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the most high and the dead in the anointed shall rise first. Right. And we believe that's our elders, elders, those that passed on before us. You had brothers that died while they was in the truth. Like this brother Daniela we talking about, you know, he died in the Lord. So we believe he's going to be one of those men that, you know, come back. One of those people that come back, one of these spirits. Then we which are alive and remain should be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Here you go. See. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, right? It's fire. And this is this is a great scripture. This is uh, faithful, 144, hopefully, let Ephesians 1 and 4, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. See, the chosen have been chosen before time, limited in advance. I think when you look up the word predestination, it talks about those that are limited in advance. The most high already decided, this is my group. This is the numeral multitude right here. And all of these are allotted to the sword. This is all I'm going to destroy. All of these, and these I'm going to save. That we should be holy and blame, so like that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai to himself. What does that mean? You were set aside from before times, right, to be a part of that group that will wake up and be adopted into what the Lord was doing because we were cast off into captivity. So there's only a certain portion of us that's going to be adopted, you know, back with the adoption of sons, those that were made under the law, right? So it's only a certain portion of those and all the rest, like our, our families and those that are not going to wake up to the truth, they're not in that. It says, having predestinated us into the adoption of children to Yahweh Shai, Amashia, Salakia, by Yahweh Shai, Amashia, to himself according to the good pleasure of his will had nothing to do with us it was what the lord wanted to do to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved that's right it's all about the lord's choosing he was the one that did it these are our roles that we're playing out just like i'm you know like a certain prophet as Isaiah had a certain amount of books that he was going to write Ezekiel had a certain amount of books he was going to write then you had Jude that had one book Obadiah with the one book, you see? Everybody got a, a different course to play, a different role to play. Same as with wicked people, same as with that baby that this brother that brother was asking about. So let's get this one. This should be the end. This is a, it's a doozy. From the video, Panama Jack and the Sea Hag say the Bible is bullshit, right? And y'all saw the video, I'm sure. This is brother Isaiah, Shalom. All right, the word is Shalom, no O. No O. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. I need spiritual help. <laughs> My parents are telling me that you cannot marry outside of the tribes and you cannot have multiple wives. But I have heard many brothers in GMS preach otherwise. But I don't have the scriptures or a video to refer them to in order to edify them. I answer back, your parents don't know shit. And just because you bring scriptures out don't mean they will believe it. We've made many videos on these topics and you're going to have to look them up. And it's Shalom, no O. Let's go back to this question. See, this is the thing that Jake does. You watch the videos and you, you listen to what's being said and you believe it, but you don't take no notes. So therefore, when somebody else bring up what they believe, you can't even counter it because you ain't been studying. You don't know where to, where to look because all you did was listen to something and you ran with it. And anyway, how do your parents know what you believe, what you've been doing? So obviously your parents know that they're Israelites, but what do you, I mean, I, and we've taken from it that you live with your parents, I guess. 
But why is it messing you up what your parents say? You listening to the prophets, are you not? Your parents are not prophets. Why is, why is it messing you up? See? Focus, Jake. Focus. I'm going to say it again. If you heard brothers from GMS preach this, that you had multiple wives, surely they went to the scriptures and read them. Why don't you know where they at? Because you didn't take notes. Now, in this brother's defense, <clears throat> he got videos on this channel. And let me say this before I go on. What's happening is we get on guys sometimes for not making videos. We know that you got dudes that have been watching the tr videos of the truth for 10 years. They haven't done one fucking thing. Like this guy, Steve, jo Steve Jones, Stephen Jones, whatever his name is. This nigga been watching videos for probably a decade and ain't did one thing for the truth. Guys like that, they just lukewarm. But he'll tell you he's a man of the Lord, though. He hadn't done one thing for the truth, but he's a man of the Lord. That's the opposite of a guy that's new that watched the videos and learned and believed it. He believed it so much, he just jumped out and started making videos before he can even explain stuff. So sometimes you have that. You have men that's so new, but sometimes the new brothers should take a little more time and study and, and get built up first, then make your videos, then go on the highways and hedges, right? But that's all zeal and faith. The brother got a lot of faith because he started making videos. He just get into a conversation with people and they got a different point of view. And with the Israelites, a lot of Israelites got a problem with multiple wives because they're still under a, a Western vibration. They haven't repented. Or if they repented, they're just not uh, converted. You got Israelites who believe we going off and of saying we're going to have multiple wives in the kingdom. We ain't going to have, like we tell you before, you got Jake to believe we're going to be in the kingdom. Ain't going to be no sex. You can't have multiple wives. You can't be with a woman of other nations. If ain't no sex, ain't going to be no children born. I don't know what the fuck they think. They think the stork, the, the Israelite stork going to just drop babies off. Is that what they think? I don't know. We can't. Honey is unclean. Chicken is unclean. Tuna is unclean. So there's no chicken, no honey, no tuna in the kingdom. We ain't even going to eat meat in the kingdom. Right? We're going to be vegetarians. We're going to be vegetarians who don't have sex, who don't have children, can't have multiple wives. You can't do shit. What kind of faggot kingdom is that, man? What kind of faggot ass kingdom is that? You, you, you Jason, need to have your head examined and believe all this wild shit. We're going to have the fullness of life, but in a glorified state. You get that? In a glorified state. That's what we're going to have. We're going to be changed. We're going to have superhuman bodies and all of that. We ain't going to be in no punk-ass kingdom. We floating on clouds. All we do is play music and sing hymns and pick grass and eat berries. No. We're going to have slaves. We're going to have concubines and all that. Let's deal with some of this. Let's deal with all of it. My parents are telling me that you cannot marry outside of the tribes and you cannot have multiple wives. Stop right there. <sighs> this is the thing. Jake don't understand concubinage. Do you not understand it? Because they'll go all the scriptures and say, uh, see right here, he told them they can't be with the women of the nations, even though our fathers have done this. The women of the other nation, and see, it's a, it's a righteous thing for Jake. To, they'll say, see, we the Israelites, we're going to be the only immortals, and the other nations are dirty. They're, below, they're beneath us. Why we want to join ourselves? You got a point. But that's not the Lord's ways. His ways are higher than our ways. It's not what we think. It's what he thinks. And he says we're going to subjugate these devils. We're going to subjugate these nations. They're not going to be immortals. We're going to be mortals and they're going to be beneath us. We're going to be able to take as many as we choose. And it's in the law. It's not dirty for you. It's like and to be with a woman of the other nations. They just can't be a concubine is a, a wife of lesser status than the Israelite. Right. There are going to be no concubines from the Israelites. They're going to be concubines of the other nations, which is a wife of a lesser status. This is where your problem and your way of thinking is. Like how now you got Wesley Snipes and these other celebrities, Dave Chappelle, marry these Asian women, right? Which a lot of them be Israelites, but you, you just, you know, we don't know that. So you're looking at it like that. Oh, he, why did he just get him a black woman? See? But it, that's not the thing. You're going to be able to be with the women of other nations, and it's in the law. Not through no lust type of thing. It's just the way that, that the Lord made people. We're going to read some of this. Jim S. in his likeness, Isaiah 60, 21. This is in the kingdom. Thy people also shall be all righteous, every one of us. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. 
a little one shall become a thousand. It's gonna be how they gonna become a thousand. They're gonna be much sex between men and women, like it's always been. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in His time. That's gonna happen in the kingdom. We're gonna have the law. See, Jake, you you take everything at face value. You're not factoring in the fact that we're gonna get new bodies, and the law is gonna be within us. Let's get that first. Hebrews eight. Let's go there. See, the law is never going to go away. It's always going to be here. It's just going to be within us. So the nation is going to have to follow it. Hebrews 8 and 7, for if the first covenant, if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, all 12 tribes. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Listen, this is very important. I will put my laws into their mind. Not the one the concubine, but yeah, that one too. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. You can't have five, six people under the new covenant, and everybody else is still under, you know, we're still under grace. No, we're going to all be under it together. When, we, when one comes into the new covenant, we're going to all be there together. It ain't something that we can decide on our own whether we're going to accept it or not. It's just going to be it. It's just going to be. We're going to be all made in righteousness again. Right? Or we're going to be all made in righteousness. And we, every one of us is going to have a law in our inward parts. When we have this law in our inward parts, let's see here. This is how we're going to judge. This out of 144,000 is going to be able to judge because we're going to have the law within us. We're going to be righteous. We ain't never going to commit a sin. So, what are we going to revert to when we get make moves to what's within us? And when? when we're, going to, we're going to read that in just a second. So, when it comes to these women of other nations, they're going to be concubines, wives of lesser status beneath our Israelite wives. The Israelite woman ain't going to lose her place. We ain't choosing them over you. You just It's just going to be an addition to the family. They're going to be our servants. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be in concubinage. You're going to be the wife. They're going to be concubines. You're going to be the wife. They're going to be concubines. It's, a, it's allowable. The laws that are in the scriptures, they're allowed. They're not dirty. It's allowed. Here's one, domestic relations. Deuteronomy 21 and 10, when I go forth to war against our enemies, are we in war right now? Are we going in our power? No, but we will be, and we have been in the past, and, and the Israelites reacted with this. King David did it. Other men of the Lord did it. When I go forth to war against our enemies, and the Lord thy power hath delivered them into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and see us among the captives, a beautiful woman. Who is this? This is a woman of another nation. Right? You went to war against the Hamites. You saw a Hamite girl. You won the battle. Then you had them prisons. But then you said out of the prison, ooh, who is that? She's beautiful. Take her out from among the captives. Clean her up. Send her to my quarters. That's what you said. That's what you're going to do in the kingdom if you want her. And your Israelite wife, she's going to have other slave girls that's going to take this one, one that you like. And they're going to clean her up. and going to put berries, berries in her hair. Right, they're gonna do all the things you like for them to do. They're gonna find some nice clothes to put on. They're gonna present her to you when they point at time, and you're gonna be like, "Yeah, y'all did a good job with her." It ain't gonna be like now, uh, uh, you know, that neck rolling shit. I ain't bring this bitch over here. She smell like fish, you know. It ain't gonna be all that. We gonna we gonna be completely changed, of course. We're not gonna be in our same mental state as we are now. Black, you know, you're not gonna feel them feelings like you feel now. Jealousy envy no but this law is here and sis among the cat is a beautiful woman and has a desire under her that thou wouldst have her to thy wife well she right there brother say wife what kind of wife concubines she ain't gonna be equal with your israelite wife or Israel, israelite wives then thou shalt bring her home to thine house and she shall shave her head and pare her nails and she shall put away she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off of her off her and shall remain in thine house and beware her father and her mother a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her 
and be her husband and she shall be thy wife now again this is a concubine which is a wife she yours can't nobody else be with her she belong to you but it's not a wife like your Israelite wife. Israelite wife, see, the Israelite women going to be in the kingdom. It's their kingdom too. So you're going to be a princess. You're going to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You got all the full rights. You got all these things going on under the confines of the most high of the law. These women are not going to have that. They're not going to be citizens of the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be lower nations and below us. But they're going to be, um, they're going to be concubines though. This brother got a good definition. Jim has spiritual arc in the Bible of concubine is a woman who lives with a man as if she were a wife, but without having the same status as a wife concubines in the, in the patriarchal age and beyond held an inferior rank. They were secondary wives. See, they don't have a right of inheritance. They don't have a right to property. They can't tell you about affairs in the world. What's going on. They just, you, and she, yes, my Lord, you go, <laughs> or how it is. You, snap and she come running you know you and your wife can also direct her according to what you would have her do the Israelite wife she can sit there with you and, and you know y'all it's different it's a different thing she's a part of that you know she's the inner circle the Israelite wives they're gonna be you're gonna be in so much glory you're gonna be in glory the concubine women are not gonna be in glory right they're, even though the kingdom of heaven is gonna be a benefit to everybody present Cause it's going to be way better than this punk ass world now, but they're not going to be on the level with us. They're going to be servants. And, and again, with Jake right here, your family telling you can't have multiple wives. Even now you could, you it's lawful to do it, but it's not expedient and we don't push that. But in the kingdom, we're going to have many wives, both Israelites and of other nations. It's right there in the law. And there's other things we can go into and read it, but ain't no point to beat it to death but I don't have the scriptures or a video to refer them to in order to edify them. Like I said in it here, your parents don't know shit. And just because you bring scriptures out, don't mean they will believe it. We've made many videos on these topics. You're going to have to look them up and it's Shalom, not, you know, no. Oh, and I mean, I ain't going to go further than that with it because like we told you, you got to get over this thing where you want your family to your hundred percent truth is not for mom and dad. They ain't going to, they ain't going to receive it like that. Most of these older people, you know, these, these older people that have been Christians, they ain't going to receive it. They're looking for some smooth shit to tell them that people are going to get beat up. They're going to be slaves. You're going to have servants. You're going to have mother wife. They don't want to hear that shit. All they want to hear is the Lord love everybody, even if they know they're Israelites. Jake just got an awkward way of always wanting. You think righteousness is everybody being happy at the same time and being fucking equal. That ain't righteousness. It's not righteous because they 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 can't govern. They're not the righteous seed. They can't govern us. They can't govern us. Look at the, they got freedom now. Look at the world. It's all fucked up. The Most High got to put us back in authority behind under His Son so that we can make the world the way it's supposed to be from the onset. These people ain't got no righteousness in them. We have it in us. They're gonna be looking to us to look and do things. Jim S. Amati, your eyes from your howard. Ezekiel eleven seventeen. Therefore say, Thus said the Lord Power, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. This is what we're going to get. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you and and will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. Right? You're not going to be sinful flesh like you are now. That they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. We're going to have the law in our inward parts. We're going to be changed into superhuman beings. We're going to be immortal. We're going to live forever, but we're going to be completely righteous because if we were to commit sin, that would bring decay. It wouldn't be able to live forever. So the Lord is going to, he's going to make it where we can't even commit sins. So there will be no decay and no death in our ranks. GMS in his likeness, Genesis 35 and 10. See these people of the earth, they're going to still be earthlings, flesh creatures, mortals, foolish mortals. <laughs> and the most High said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name should not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel or Yasharala. 
Yah meaning he, sharp prince. The word Allah means God. Yasharallah, he is a prince with God, a prince of God, sons of the Almighty. See that? And the Most High said to him, I am the Most High Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. What? Be fruitful and multiply. When the two thirds get killed off, what we got to do? We got to be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the most I never gonna change the way he's gonna do things. He's gonna make it where all we gotta do now is you take this finger and plug it in your wife's ear, and a baby come out. So you don't have to deal with messy sex no more. I made mean, a new way. No. No. Same brother, Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Lord ain't no, he ain't operating on no primitive level. He's very advanced, and we're gonna come, we're gonna make a full man, we're gonna be upgraded on such a higher level. That little shit where you try to taste, so you think the Bible is just for now. See, the Bible is just for now. In the kingdom, we don't even need it no more. We're gonna throw that away. We're gonna do things a new way. The Lord gonna have us have babies. We're gonna sneeze and the baby gonna just pop out. That ain't what's happening. It's just going to be an upgraded version of what we are now. We're going to be way up on a higher level now. Will we have babies the same? We'll see Will it, with, whether it's still painful or not. We don't know what it's like for our super, our immortal wives to bring forth children. We don't know. We don't know that. Servant of the Most High, Brother Isaiah from Jim S. Raleigh, Genesis 16 and 6. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. See that? Do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarai, Sarai dealt hardly with her. She fled from her face. What did Abraham do? He gave unto Sarah, who was named would become Sarah later. He gave her Hagar, right? His concubine girl. He said, you, you can do whatever you want to do. Same. It's going to be the same way. Man, Abraham is going to be a president in the kingdom. The Lord ain't going to do nothing different. In that regard, we're going to deal the same way, but we're going to be completely righteous, though. A lot of great scriptures. GMS Spiritual Art. Romans 9 21 had not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel in the honor and another under dishonor. What if the most high willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and do a much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction are the Edomites started up top. It said, you know, it talked about Jacob and Esau in verse 13 and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had a four prepared under glory. Jacob is the vessels of mercy. We are re ordained to receive mercy. Esau was ordained not to receive mercy. Meaning what? They're going to be destroyed in the end of it all. They're going to be destroyed. But they're but they getting their portion now. They got a kingdom. They've been ruling. They're on top. They got it all. They, go, it's going, they got it going on. But it's going to be taken away. See, it's going to be taken away. Let's go back to Jake. He says, I need spiritual help. My parents are telling me that you cannot marry outside of the tribes. Well, marriage is concubinage. It ain't marrying as per se, like, you know, we explained it. And you cannot have multiple wives. That's not true either. But I have heard many brothers in GMS preach otherwise. If he had took notes, he would be able to go say, see, right here, right here, right here. But you're not, but the thing that these people have a problem with is that they can't receive the mysteries. They're not able to see that. They're just them regular basic Israelites trying to explain to a basic Israelite that we're going to have spiritual power, that we're going to be immortals. Some of them don't even believe in the chariots. They think they're going to get on planes with suitcases with fucking gold bars in them or money, reparations checks. They're going to go back to Israel and just wait around for the Lord to come back. You got a whole lot of people that believe that way. You can't make them, you know, they just can't get it. They got to be able to get the mysteries. Now, you can read the scriptures. And we got, like I said, we got many videos going to that stuff. You just got to be diligent and look. But you, what every person should do, you Israelites got all these damn questions about shit that we already covered. This is what you should do, show you. Because I don't know what y'all be doing. It's like, you know, all you see is just the new videos. That's right. Elder Kazai said it. I'm, I'm going to show a comment. Hold on here. <clears throat> he said, the surface level Israelites can't get this. And a lot of times you're having a Jake, like that brother, like I said, the brother's diligent because he already started trying to do videos and stuff. But your 
parents are probably surface level Israelites. They might be Yah Israelites. See, Jake, when you first come into the truth, you think all Israelites the same. You have a brother from GMS that's learning from GMS, and you got the Yah Israelites, and y'all think it's all the same. It ain't the same. Them Yah Israelites ain't on our level. They're very surface level. So this is what y'all should do. When you when you on your page, you come across one of our videos, you can go to any brother page. You click on their on their avatar. Go to videos on their page. And you just cycle through these hundreds of videos and see if if we covered any of this shit you're asking about or that you're curious about. That's why we that's why we make detailed titles of what we're teaching about. So you'll know. If you were Israelite and wanted to read the Book of Mormon and you was on my channel, you said, oh, shit, Hebrews like the Book of Mormon is not for you. I'm going to watch this. You watch it and you find out the Book of Mormon is not for you. If you take notes, then you know where to go. You, you're flipping through here. See, you're seeing all kind of stuff we didn't answer. Leviathan, spiritual power, multiple wives is not uh, is not more important than righteousness. There goes something dealing with multiple wives. Oh, that people shall be all righteous. You'll find out about that. We got, it's a prophecy video. Christians we're dealing with just all kind of different topics and questions we've answered that we've been going over over and over and you can't say we don't touch on all these many different things and so many different but you got to take time to go through it 70 missing verses the ladder of Jacob and holy days three days of darkness is a false doctrine look at that I mean just everything you can go through and then just my you can every page you go on brothers got videos just like these and so so many different ones answering questions, breaking stuff down, going to things at length. And here it is, you going, you know, you messed up over the multiple wives thing or over your family being messed up. You got a question on hell, the video. What's this? Um, but this is one I, I clipped. But I mean, it's just all kind of everything. Oh, I put the burning hell video up. That's what I did. But everything we see right here, response, IUIC, hell and Revelation 20. You got to take time to go into it. You got a question on the rapture? Pre-tribulation rapture is a lie. Video dealing with that. Just different stuff. Whatever come our way, the Lord put in our path, we break it down. We get in the videos about it. And that's it. We got like the only videos we got on our page is just street teaching. Nope. We got street teaching. We got questions answered. We got topics we going into. Here the Hebrew Israelites would be the only immortals loaded with scripts load it so you just have to go on the pages and, and just surf those different channels look up stuff bro why you why you telling us that <clears throat> we don't need to know jay love to give a personal testimony and tell us all their business it doesn't matter to us you get kept that shit to yourself. You, I'd rather have a Judah. See, Jake say this shit, but in the kingdom, when you stand seeing all them beautiful ass women, you ain't gonna be saying that. Jim S. Page Master, Elder Kazar, Acts twenty twenty seven. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High. We get into all these things, all this stuff. Yep. Same Elder Brother Colossians four and six. Let your speech be always with grace. Season with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man. We know how we have to give different answers. We have to give, you know, some brothers need a little more polish on this or that. So, I mean, you know, that's that's pretty much what we're going to stop at. This is uh, Jim S. Amathe, Eyes from your Howarder, James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, you listen close. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High that give it to all men liberally and abradeth not. And it shall be given him. You got to pray on these things. But as we told you, when you great ask questions and you start saying stuff like we can't, we ain't going to be able to have multiple wives in the kingdom. You got to be able to factor in that we're going to have the law in our inward parts. And the law says we can do that. See it? No, because you watch it. This person, now new behaviors, you watch a bunch of different groups, and we told you that before. That's why you're confused, because the different groups are going to give you a different spin. They're going to tell you, like, IUIC, they don't want to deal with the multiple wives thing. They want to make it sound like you got this one woman. Your ass going to be in the kingdom. You got this one woman forever, or however it is. Nope, look it up. Yeah, we've answered it. We've answered it.
the, the first Corinthians seven, what are the parameters of it? It gives you the parameters in the chapter. It gives it to you. It's always the same family, family stuff. I mean, that scripture right there is pretty self explanatory, cuz. I mean, just I mean, just to be honest with you. It's very, very self explanatory. First Corinthians seven eleven is not difficult. Let's I'm gonna read it right now. Just to show you how how easy that is. I mean, it's been touched on many times. And you got to start at around about where well, we started 10. It's the first Corinthians 7 and 10. But until the married I command, married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. What's what's hard about that? Let not the wife depart from her husband. If she's a di obedient woman, she ain't gonna be trying to leave her husband. I'm I'm tired. I'm confused. I'm bored. Uh, you know, them, them excuses women give. Her duty is to the household. Her duty is to the man. It ain't to herself. This is what a lot of women can't get. That's why they wind up falling out of the truth because they have to take the focus off of themselves and it be focused be on the family, on the man of the Lord that's doing the work. She's not supposed to leave for any reason. He get another woman. If he decide to do this, do that, she ain't supposed to leave. She's supposed to understand that this man... The law tells him what he can do, what he can't do. You ain't the one that tells him what he can do and what he can't do, but whatever. Verse 11, but, but, and if she depart, if she's so damn stubborn or if it's so bad, she got to leave. Let's say the dude beating her up or he hitting her or something, right? Cause that comes up a lot. Women love to use that. What if he hidden her? What if he beat me? Okay. You can leave if, to keep him from killing you. He got a problem with his hands. He can't stop hitting you for whatever reason. Yeah, you can leave. But if you leave, here's the parameters. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. You can't go and get down with another dude. You can't have sex with him. He can't be your friend, right? Your friend that, that put it in, but y'all ain't y'all didn't get married. No, if you if you be with that man, you committed adultery. I don't give a fuck what name you put on it, because that's all this shit really be. Women want to leave and go free, free to do whatever they want to do. If you, if the situation in the house is so bad, you got to leave. The Lord already said, don't leave. But if it gets so bad that you must leave, okay. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. You got it? You can't be with nobody else. You can't get with another dude. You can't put the tip in. You can't put the drawers to the side. None of that shit. Let her remain unmarried. Or, or here's your other choice. Be reconciled to her husband. You miss him so bad, even though he's an asshole. He's a son of a bitch. He like to hit on you, get drunk. He came in two minutes. It was too quick. Whatever. Right? His breath bad in the morning. He don't want to wash his feet, but you just miss him so bad. You got it. You want to go home. Yeah, he can, he can take you back. Right? Let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. Those are your only choices. What are you talking about parameters, cuz? And let not the husband put away his wife. He don't pose to put her away. Jake be doing a lot of bullshit. The woman get a little extra pounds on her. Then you've been looking at Sister Frida down at the school. She look a little better, right? She look a little better. So now you want her. Well, you should just have Frida and her then. You're going to try to put her away. Come up with a bullshit excuse. You can put this sister away so you can be with this other woman. You can't do it, man. You shouldn't do it. But Jake still does it because they wicked. They just wicked, man. It, it happens. We heard the stories. A righteous man ain't trying to put away his woman. You're trying to work shit out. Work it out. Fix it. Two adults should be able to work out whatever problems you got. If you jakes out there, don't be hitting on them damn women, man. Let it be. You ain't, you ain't, you, you, hey, you get in trouble, it's on you. Don't be beating on them women. Just leave this shit alone. Let her talk. She's a Judite woman. She's going to run her damn mouth. You ain't in the kingdom. They think you're going to have an Israelite wife and she's just going to be quiet. She ain't going to be quiet. She's not. She's not going to be quiet. Look, now the simple. Look at this guy. Chicka my do, you guru. <laughs> Chicka my do, you guru. Your name, your name rhyme. If I didn't know better, I'd think I was being trolled. Will we be able to train for pleasure with new bodies in the kingdom? How are we going to answer that? Why would you need to train for what you gonna do? <laughs> now you make me get silly. You whip it out and then practice. What you, what you gonna practice on? What how you gonna train? You gonna simulate it? You gonna go in the sex simulator? <laughs> you gonna visit Elon Musk and get you a couple of cyborgs and shit and sleep with them and see if you do it just like you can hit the G spot every time. 
We don't know, man. We don't know. That's dumb. That's that's really people say there's no such thing as stupid questions, but that's kind of stupid, cuz just to be honest, this stupid. We'll be able to train for pleasure in the new kingdom. Your mind gonna be on so much other stuff, different galaxies, planets, all this other stuff. You think about sex. You're on the low level, Jake. Wake up. Get with it. You're on a low level. Randy Watson told you already. Change that avatar, cuz. Change that avatar. Change it. Second Timothy 2.23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. Jake gonna say, what's wrong with my avatar? You are not a serious man of the Lord. We don't want jokers around us. Look at this guy, Randy Watson. Change your avatar, man. You can put a flower, a spaceship, put something on it. We can ready to shut it down because this, this always happens. Jake start getting silly. Like Elder Apostle Ramlob said, the dove hour, right? This is the sign of moth. <clears throat> Second Timothy 2.33. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. We just read it, but it wanted to come out again. Just, we'd be able to train for pleasure in the kingdom. Come on, man. Hey. So that's it, brothers. Let's see if... Uh... Yep. That's it, brother. Yep. When I was a child. I spake as a child. And really, you, Jake spent a lot of time thinking about unnecessary shit. Ain't not one of us. I can honestly tell you, my mind has never said to me, will we be able to train for pleasure in the kingdom? I, I've never said that to myself. You in the kingdom, why do you need to train? You're going to be perfect. Everything will work perfectly. What do you need to train for? Train. <laughs> that nigga going to be a gigolo in the kingdom. You're going to train. You're going to train to get it right. I'm hitting the bell every time. Golly. So, you know, to the brother Isaiah, don't take it the wrong way, but your parents, just read them basic stuff. You don't need to get no heavy conversations about that. They can't get it. They're not going to receive it. But if you can, you can, what you can do is just look in the scriptures, though. I mean, look in the videos and just see, um, you know, if we touched on the multiple wives things, different brothers have touched on that, you know concubines and multiple wives you can use the search engine to help you get videos and stuff and if you want to read a scripture you can do it but i can already tell you it's gonna be a waste of time but it's your time the lord put the spirit on you go ahead and go ahead and try it we'll see but in the future don't be discouraged about asking questions because that's how you find out you know what i mean you can ask people out there with questions put your questions on the comment board not the live chat put them on the comment board if it's something I'm going to start being a little bit more harsh about how, what questions I answer, because this shit is getting out of hand. But we'll see. All right, so to watch everybody for joining in, for listening to the people that uh, I got on you a little bit, don't be too uh, put off by it. All right? GMS Page Master, average Jake mindset doesn't evolve beyond sex. We've been brought down to a beastly level. The truth should upgrade you, though. That's right. And don't get me wrong, we like to Hey, we like to get in as much as the next person, right? But our minds are not on that. Our kingdom is going to be so much greater than that. Sex is going to be like a, you know, that's an afterthought. That's some shit you worry about when you get home, man. We got a lot of things to look forward to. And while we are going to multiply, you know, like the Lord said, and all of that. Okay, well, that's good. That's good, bro. Because I remember one time before, okay, for two years, my fault then. I won't say that no more. I was challenging the BLB that the, that the part means divorce. Nope. See, this is the thing we tell you, though. The blue letter goes off. The blue letter's not going to break the scripture down for you, okay? Let her depart. It said, But it said remain unmarried, though, right? That's the key. And it says she can be reconciled to her husband. So when you see the word depart, nope, she can't be with another man. The brother put the scripture of Romans 7. Let me go back and find it. You got to remember the law of the husband, right? How was shy? Nawana, Romans 7 and 1, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law had dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of the husband. And then it goes on down in the chapter, it says, if she be joined to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if the husband be dead, then she is no adulteress. That's what it goes on to say. You read that, read that chapter. You'll see. 
So that when it says the first Corinthians departed, they ain't talking about no divorce because there's really no such thing as that. Even though people get paperwork here in Babylon the Great called divorce, but in the Lord's eyes, it's not so. Among Israelites, among Israelites, see? And these right just a hurt ass niggas, man. But see? Stop spreading hate. We're not spreading hate. All you do is be angry. I ain't angry now. I'm happy now because you're blocked. I'm happy. So you just lied again. All right, the water brothers and sisters, we'll see you again soon, Lord willing. All right, to the brother uh, now, new behaviors. Okay, so you just watch GMS. That's great. So when you, so I know how to receive you from now on then. But yeah, look up those chapters. Look up those chapters. We'll see you again soon. But now, like I tell brothers, if a woman going to leave you, she going to leave. You ain't going to be able to read her scriptures and she going to stay. That you know, we you just have to understand that that's just how it is. They're not gonna say, Oh, shit, you know, I didn't know in the law I wasn't supposed to leave. You know, they're gonna do what they want to do. All right, Shalom, all praise to you. How about Shimmy? How shy? Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, brothers and sisters. <clears throat>